This video walks through the creation of a simple dashboard. We'll use the Create menu to create the dashboard. The Dashboard Designer uses a drag and drop environment to create dashlets. You can create brand new visualizations or use existing ad hoc views and reports. Say for example that I have an ad hoc view that I want to include in my dashboard. By dragging a view onto the canvas, I can create a dashlet that will fill all available space. When creating additional dashlets, the UI provides a visual cue that shows where the dashlet will be placed. You can also quickly search for existing content. For example, I know that I have a bubble chart that is needed for my dashboard. I can drag that onto the canvas. I can resize or drag dashlets to a different part of the canvas to make the best use of the web page space. Double clicking or using a right click menu on the selected dashlet lets you set properties. For example, by default, the dashlet uses the name of its source viewer report. I can change the name and set other properties that affect the title bar. Using the Apply button lets me see how the changes will appear. In this dashlet, I want the user to have the ability to export its content. I enable the export option, then click OK. You then see the export button appear in the title bar. Overall dashboard properties can be set by selecting the properties toolbar button, where I can modify the background canvas color, set the canvas behavior, by default it's set to be web responsive. You can also define a fixed size for scrollable content. Also affect the display of borders, title bar colors, and other properties such as dashboard level export, which exports the dashboard as an image, and auto refreshing dashboard content on a given interval. Note though that the cache setting on the server affects the timing of requerying the underlying data source. Text dashlets are created by dragging text onto the canvas. I can edit the format by double clicking. For the text dashlet, I can set web responsive sizing properties and various font and alignment properties. I can hit the Apply button to see how it looks, then OK when finished. Notice when I resize the designer panes that the web responsive dashlets auto adjust in size to fit the canvas. I can use the Delete key to delete the active dashlet. I'll remove the Sales Mix dashlet and put a report in its place. This report was created with Jaspersoft Studio. I want to hide the title bar for this dashlet, then set the scale to fit property. Pixel perfect reports created in Studio are not web responsive in nature, but they can be stretched to either the height or width of the dashlet. When I scale to fit the entire page in a dashlet, I see white space on one of the edges. I resize dashlets to make the most effective use of canvas space. Let's take a look at creating a new visualization. I'll create a new chart by dragging that onto the canvas. I select the data source that's available based on my server security access, then use an embedded version of the ad hoc designer to select and lay out my visualization. To learn more about ad hoc views, check out the ad hoc views tutorial. For this dashlet, I'll show sales information by geography and gender and then set the dimensional zoom to the most detailed data level. I then save my chart as a new dashlet. I can then preview my dashboard to see how it will appear and work when users are viewing it. I can see that with the content panel removed that it is resizing to fit all available space. This design means that the dashboard will adapt to fill all available space in the various screen resolutions of each user viewing the dashboard. Maximizing a dashlet causes it to fill the entire canvas, where I have access to all chart interactivity, like a brush zoom into more details of a time series chart. The report contains hyperlinks, as defined in Jaspersoft Studio. Selecting a link opens a new browser tab with the Interactive Report Viewer. You can learn more about interactive reporting by watching the report's tutorial video. When finished designing, I save the dashboard to a folder. You can view or edit the dashboard from the list page. Let's take a quick look at another dashboard that was designed with some advanced features. 
I click on the Tutorial Dashboard. This dashboard contains text dashlets with hyperlinks that have been formatted to look like buttons or tabs. A Jaspersoft Studio based report, several ad hoc views and embedded charts, image dashlets with hyperlinks, and text dashlets containing dynamic text strings for the current time and date. Selecting hyperlinks causes other reports, views, dashboards, or web pages to be opened in a new browser tab, or in the existing page where a back button takes the user back to the previous page. Hyperlinks can also pass parameters and update other dashlets within a dashboard, including text dashlets and title bar text. Undo Redo buttons let the user move back and forth between hyperlink actions or filter value updates. Finally, let's take a look at scheduling. When you right click on a dashboard, you will see the schedule option. This lets you create one or more schedules on various time intervals, set filter values, and set output options. The dashboard is output as an image that can be embedded into various formats. The dimensions of the image size are controlled by the canvas size setting. The Notification tab lets you send the output to various recipients. When you save the schedule, you then return to the Job Schedule page for the dashboard. And from the main list page, see a clock icon next to the dashboard, indicating that it has one or more associated schedules. This concludes the dashboard's intro tutorial. To learn more about advanced dashboard design, check out the advanced dashboards video, where you will learn how to create filters, hyperlinks, and pass parameter values.